From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and welcome to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. And in this episode, we share some memories of our former colleague at WSM Radio. Uh, For decades, a fixture on the Nashville Network and a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame, Ralph Emery, who passed away Saturday, January the 15th at the age of 88 with Eric Markham from Coffee Country and Cody. You got to meet Ralph Emery once at a really cool event that kind of honored both Ralph and WSM Radio. Yeah, and it's amazing when you look back on the history History of both radio in general and WSM and its impact and the number of people that have worked at this radio station to get to spend a moment with Ralph Emery at the WSM tower to celebrate. I believe it was its 85th anniversary Mm -hmm. of the tower. That's the moment that you realize somebody who has made such an impact in a place where you have built your career as far as a a radio DJ or somebody involved in mass media, you see the impact of their legacy right in front of you at such an important event. So you never take those moments for granted. And that was definitely one of those moments where I'm like, I have to get a picture no matter what. (laughs) And I have it. And it's a, it's a special one in my, in my favorites catalog on my phone. Yeah. You know, looking through social media, what was interesting is the, the last artist who passed that had the same impact as far as just everyone having a story and a memory of him was Charlie pride. Mm -hmm. Cause Charlie pride would just would stop and meet fans and everybody who met him seemed to have a photo. And it's the same with Ralph, everybody in the industry and, and, and even many, many fans, uh, had such a great personal connection to him. So we share some great stories. Uh, Monday uh, was Martin Luther King Day, so we were off. So this was recorded on uh, Tuesday, January uh, the 18th. And our memories of Ralph Emery from Coffee Country and Cody. And I must say, Kelly Sutton has the best meeting Ralph Emery story. And I'm not going to spoil it, but you'll hear it in just a few minutes on our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. <laughs> Coffee, Country, and Cody on WSM. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm telling you, we are heartbroken. Kelly Sutton and I communicated uh, on the death of Ralph Emery. You had, it had just popped up on my phone mm. as you texted me. Hey, I just heard. I'm not sure if it's true, but Ralph Emery has passed away. This was over the weekend. Dallas Frazier passed away, songwriter, Hall of Famer. Uh, Jerry Crutchfield passed away. Paulette Carlson's husband, Randy Paulette, was just in studio with us, passed away unexpectedly from a heart attack at 71. Uh, All this in the last 48 hours. We wound up with a long weekend. Mm -hmm. We planned to work yesterday, but then weather here in Nashville kind of prevented uh, everything was fine where I was. I mean, yes, we had ice and snow and all that, but the roads were fine and we didn't have very much of it. But you guys... South and southwest, mm-hmm. I mean, at eight inches. I mean, so there's an eight inch variable between my house and 50 miles away. Yep. Uh-huh. It's yeah. just been been crazy. But Kelly, I know uh, we are both heartbroken uh, because Ralph, you worked as closely with Ralph as anybody I know on a day to day basis at the Fox affiliate here in town. He's the whole reason I'm in town. You know, I talked uh, to JP, who is our program director. He actually came in and our general manager, he came in and did a little uh, just a tribute to Ralph on the airwaves. I believe it was either Friday or Saturday night. And he, you know, texted Mm -hmm. Saturday night and he texted and this is before my phone died. He texted me and he said, you know, hey, would you call in? And, And we just talked about him on the air. And the thing is, Ralph was just larger than life. So many people know him, grew up with him either here locally, because he did a morning show here locally on our NBC affiliate for years. And it was the most popular morning show in the nation at the time. It was so big. And I told this story on the air. It was such a huge success and such a ratings boom that executives from NBC in New York, the national headquarters for NBC, came to Nashville to watch this morning show and figure out why it was such a success. And when they came here... They had outhouse races in, <laughs> in the parking lot <laughs> and the chalk toss where they would throw up a piece of chalk and he'd yep. catch it in his pocket. Yep. And they had live commercials and the, the executives were scratching their heads and they were like, I, we have no idea. We have no idea why people like this. This is crazy. And they left and went back to New York. So it was just 
<laughs> you know, that that was he was such a staple for people here. But then nationally, when we're talking, you know, Pop Goes the Country and so many other shows that he did. Well, I TNN, remember the Shotgun Red Days. Yeah, really catapulted mm-hmm. him as popular as he already yeah. was because of all night radio here at WSM. And then you mentioned right. the local television show. But boy, when TNN hit mm-hmm. and uh, put, I mean, they even call it Nashville now. They call it the Ralph Show. Oh, the world knew it right. as the Ralph Show. So I, I kid you not, when uh, my parents came to visit, uh, our mutual friend Kathy Martindale was kind enough to get me backstage for Nashville now. And I got to take my parents and we had great seats. But when I got to introduce them to Ralph after the show, <laughs> it was like introducing them to the president. It was like, it was like, look, at, right. look at the, pro- look what my son has done for me. Look at this. So it was like... <laughs> Yeah, that made up for a lot of things I messed up in high school. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) You better believe it. You're like, I've made it. I made it. Well, this is my favorite Ralph story. I came to town in 2001. They were starting his show up again. They wanted to reboot the Ralph Emery show in the morning Mm -hmm. on the Fox affiliate. And so I came to audition for a role on this show as the newsreader slash weather person slash Mm co-host and i'm sitting in the lobby and i grew up with ralph um full beard full beard Mm -hmm. shotgun red days that's how i remember when he was heavy he looked like wolfman jack a little bit you look back at those old (laughs) well i wasn't gonna say it but you you said it so (laughs) he he walks in i did not know it was him and we're talking to each other for probably 15 minutes in the lobby and he said well what brings you to town i said well i'm auditioning for a new show you know i'm from evansville i'm from indiana originally i work in evansville and I came down to audition for this new show. And he said, oh, really? And so we talked for a while. And when he got up and walked away, I said, I didn't catch your name. Oh, and no. he turned around and he said, I'm Ralph Emery. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I thought at that moment in time, there is zero chance I'm getting this job. All right. Like, oh, I don't so, know. Who, because he just, he looks so different. Yeah, you know, he yeah. was thin and no beard. And I, Ralph oh, I tried to recover. I said, Ralph, I didn't so, recognize you with a beard. So but before Fox, they like tried it. to bring back some stuff on TNN mm-hmm. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they did it here at the hotel. Well, because of the difference in the time of the of, of the radio show, well, the length of the radio show and the timing of the television taping, I got him and Merle Haggard to come sit in mm-hmm. one morning. And, of course, the two of them are sitting here, and I had to go to a break, so I had welcomed them in, but had only had a chance to talk to Merle. (laughs) And then I went to the break, and as I cut my mic off, Ralph leaned over and goes, you know, I'm in the room, too. (laughs) (laughs) Just jerking my chain. I mean, he knew what was going on. But and recently called me, three or four months ago, he called Mm -hmm. me for a phone number that he needed from Mm -hmm. somebody. We had a... a 30 minute at least a 30 minute conversation and covered all kinds of territory and as always he was supportive and kind encouraging which like you was the reason Mm -hmm. uh, i was so encouraged to come to town and Mm -hmm. um, he was very instrumental in that and so he said you know i I, and i think he had just turned 88 Mm -hmm. because he was 88 when he passed away and he said uh if i make it to 90 I'm going to go ahead and live to be 100 just to spite them all. (laughs) Now, what was the famous question Ralph asked when uh, you told him you'd been hired at WSM? Oh, he said, uh, did you take a pay cut? And I paused for a moment and I said, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did, Ralph. And he goes, good. I did, too. <laughs> so, I love that. So, <laughs> things have not changed a lot from, from the National Life and Accident oh. Insurance Company to mm. the Gaylord family. <laughs> right. Man, I sure am going to miss here. him. Mm. We just wanted I to be know. a part of it all. I and, know. And God, I know it. Uh, God bless him. I mean, because of him, we have been a part of it all and gotten to yeah. do things we only dreamed of early in our careers, Absolutely. Kelly. Absolutely. That's pretty crazy. And you and I were just talking about that we wanted to go get him and, and take him to lunch. And yeah. I'm just so sad that we didn't Probably get a chance to do that. Like two weeks ago, yeah. Kelly and I had that conversation. Mm-hmm. because I said, you know, they, they kind of feel left out. Time has passed oh. them by. Mm-hmm. Bud Wendell, our longtime CEO, mm-hmm. is another one. Of, both of them in the Hall of Fame, you know. And mm-hmm. JP actually played, in addition to your phone call, he played a, a clip of, of my interview with Ralph from like 2007, 2008, mm-hmm. when he went in with Vince Gill and Mel Tillis. That was his class. 
in the Country Music Hall of Fame. Would you welcome Country Music Hall of Famer, Disc Jockey Hall of Famer, Ralph Emery, Coffee, Country, and Cody. Morning, Ralph. Hey, Phil. Good morning to you, my friend. Now, did you ever do mornings, mornings on this radio station? <laughs> uh, people know you for your all-night uh, no. antics here on WSM that made history. I never did mornings and, unless tea time he was late. <laughs> 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 and uh, I finished at uh, 5 o'clock. Yeah. And sometimes T, uh, he wasn't there. So I would call Vicky. And uh, I, I knew what was going on. Vicky would say, well, he's on his way. And then she says, Tommy, get up. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, actually, uh, we had a live uh, program at 515 with uh, a different Grand Ole Opry group each week. So I appeared on that program many times <laughs> <laughs> as the announcer. Okay. But uh, but I, I never, and then I did, the, I did a year of the waking crew. In fact, it's my last year on WSM. I was on the waking crew as the host from the hotel, and uh, that was the extent of my uh, mornings. Uh, there was one terrible morning, though, when everybody was sick, and I had relieved David Cobb at 10 o'clock the night before, and he had the sniffles, and so uh, the next morning, T. Tommy was sick, Grant Turner was sick, and you know I'm calling, and uh, finally... They got poor old David Cobb to get out of bed, come back to work, and relieve me. <laughs> and uh, I had relieved him, uh, what, about seven or eight hours earlier. So uh, now that's about the extent of my mornings on uh, WSM. Well, congratulations on the Country Music Hall of Fame. So many people have called and written and emailed us to make sure we pass that along to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It was very overwhelming, Bill. I never thought it would happen. You know, Chet Atkins used to say, well, actually, singers are really the only stars. The rest of us are the uh, support group. And then they put Chet in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Emery, guesting with us this hour on 6.50 a.m. WSM, and he brought a couple of very special things. Just give us a little tease of uh, from the all-night show, what we're going to hear when we come back okay. from the break. Okay, uh, I don't know that they ever made a record together, but Marty Robbins... And Loretta Lynn were up with me one night. I had a, it was the only time on the all night program that I ever had a poll. And it was very simple female, male, group. Vote for your favorite. And Loretta won uh, female, Marty Robbins won uh, male. And Flatten Scruggs won the group, and Bud Wendell came up and accepted for them. <laughs> and uh, because they were on the road yeah. most of the time. And anyway, I brought you a tape uh, because on the tape, it's the one time that Marty and Loretta did sing together. It seems so strange since you are gone. You return. That's good. Just knocking her out, this piano playing. I'll stay the same, dear. Oh, get it. I'll still be true. And walk along. I got it. You got to get close here. The flame of love. That's pretty. Is brightly burning. You know that I man, I could sing bass to Ernest Tubb tonight. <laughs> Your very own. Till you retire, I'll stay the same, dear. I'll still. And walk oh, yeah. <laughs> How about that? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> that turned out pretty well. It wasn't bad, was it, Ralph? No, I thought it was pretty well, good. That, we ought to do that together now. All right. You know, on a record and that. Uh, 
We'll See if we couldn't bring it back one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you feeling better? <clears throat> oh, I feel good. I'm, I don't feel bad, but I mean, uh, I got such a sore throat from sneezing, you know, because mm. when I sneeze, I love to sneeze, and I just sneeze all over. You know, oh. it makes my throat sore, my <laughs> nose sore, and my uh, stomach sore. You you love to sneeze? I really do. Well, everybody has their hang-ups. Yeah, I know. (laughs) That's Ralph Emery with Marty Robbins and Loretta Lynn. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Mattos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.